Welcome. So in this part, we're going to be drawing some more square root graphs. And here we have y is equal to the square root of negative 7x plus 1 minus 3. Now, when asked to draw a square root graph, what you have to think of is, well, I need to find what the end point is going to be. I need to figure out what the x-intercept is going to be, which occurs when y is equal to 0. And I need to figure out what the y-intercept is going to be, which occurs when x is equal to 0. Let's begin by figuring out what the end point is going to be. And this is an interesting case for figuring out what the end point is going to be. And the reason why it's interesting is because we have this negative 7 in front of our x, and that makes things a little different. So far, all we've really seen is something that looks like this, when there, the coefficient of x is just a 1. So in this case, let's just remove this negative 7 and write it as x plus 1 minus 3. Reading the end point off of this is pretty easy because we know that you just swap the sign of this one here, so it's going to be negative one, and then this stays as negative three. But now that we have a negative seven out the front here, it changes things and we need to be careful with it. There are two ways of figuring out the end point when you have a coefficient other than one for your x value. The first thing that you could do is just factorize the inside of the square root. So what does that look like? Let's draw our square root. We've got a negative three out here. I'm going to take negative seven X, sorry, I'm going to take out negative seven out of this. So I'm going to take out negative seven and that now will leave me with X here. And then if I take a negative seven out of a one, that leaves me with negative one on seven. So I have factorized it. And you can see if I was to expand this, so negative seven times X is negative seven X, negative seven times negative one on seven is plus one. I get back to what I started with. Now, the reason why we do this is because now when I'm trying to figure out the end point, I can just say, well, I can use exactly the same principle as I did up here when I just swapped the sign of whatever this was. Well, so too here, I've got X minus one on seven. So that means the X value of my end point will just be positive one on seven. So that's one way of figuring out what the X value is going to be for your end point. And of course, the Y value is just going to be your vertical translation. Now, there's actually another way to figure out what the end point is. The other way to do it, and I actually prefer this other way, is just take whatever is underneath the square root sign. So in this case, negative seven X plus one, set it equal to zero and then solve it for X. So in this case, I would first minus one to both sides and then divide both sides uh, by negative seven and then negative one divided by negative seven is positive one on seven. And would you look at that, I get the same thing. So one on seven, there it is right there. I don't even have to change the sign. So that's another way of going about it. But as long as you know that you first either need to factorize it or just set the whole thing equal to zero and solve for X, it really doesn't matter. As long as you can do it accurately, that's all that matters. Okay, let's now continue on. The next thing I need to do is figure out what my X intercept is going to be, which occurs when Y is equal to zero. So I'm gonna go, this is zero. Write it out nice and neatly. Neatness is the key. Minus three. The first thing I'm gonna do is plus three to both sides. The next thing I need to do is get rid of this square root. And remember the way that you get rid of the square root is by squaring both sides. So I'm gonna square both sides here. And that's going to leave me with three squared is nine is equal to negative seven X plus one. I'll then minus one from both sides to leave me with this. And then my last step will to be divide both sides by negative seven. So I'm gonna get eight on seven is equal to X and it's a negative as well because it's negative seven. So that's my answer. And I don't know about you, but I always like writing X is equal to negative eight on seven. Has to be that way with the X on the left. It doesn't make a difference at all, but this is what I like to do. All right, let's now move on to our last one, which is our Y intercept, which occurs when X is equal to zero. So we begin by writing this out this negative seven, I put a zero in my X spot plus one minus three, which is going to end up as Y is equal to this whole thing. Whoops, that's a bit too big because negative seven times zero is just zero. So I've just got a one there. The square root of one is just one minus three. You have to simplify it. You can't just leave it like that. Uh, and then this is going to be negative two. Hooray. Perfect, now I have all my key pieces of information. I'm going to come down here and give it a sketch. So I'm gonna to have to zoom out a bit here. And just to remind myself what the rule is, otherwise we'll forget, because it's all the way up the screen. Let me just quickly write it down. It was y is equal to the square root of negative seven x plus one minus three. 
Okay, what I would do here in my head, so I don't write down what I'm about to write down, but in my head, I'm going to picture all the transformations that are occurring here. So I start with the normal y is equal to the square root of x. But then I've got a negative in front of my x. I've got a negative in front of my x. And I know that causes a reflection across the y-axis. So it's now going that way. I then am going three down. So I'm going to take my graph and I'm going to move it three down. I also know that I have uh, my endpoint as one, seven, negative one, one on seven and negative three. So it's going to be over here. So just picturing all that in my head, I'm going to redraw it now. I'll get rid of that. So my end point is going to be here. My graph is going to look like that. This point here is negative, oh, sorry, not negative, is one on seven, negative three. I have my y-intercept as zero, negative two, and I have an x-intercept of negative eight on seven and zero. And just like that, we are done. So we've labeled our endpoint. We have labeled our y-intercept and we've labeled our x-intercept. We've used coordinates. We've thought about the reflections that have happened. Uh, we've done everything nice and neatly. Uh, the teacher should be able to read this and understand what I have done. Hopefully this has made sense and I will see you in the next part.